Right, I had a viewer ask a question um, about Livingstoner chinensis, basically just asking how mine was doing in the garden. And you know, out of all the palms I grow here in the UK, and uh, it's not really thought of as a climate to grow sort of lots of varied species of palms but we can get away with a lot and um, depending where you are in the country if you're in a slightly milder part you can get away with probably more species than you think of but yeah out of all the species of palm that i grow and i haven't counted how many different species are i'm not that fussed about it's not about numbers it's about plants i like it's not about Oh, you can grow 30 different types of palm. Uh, that's, that's, that's nothing to do with this. That's just to do with, for me, I love palm trees and I want to grow as many different types, different looks. Um, what I can get away with, basically, in my climate. But yeah, so, yeah, out of all the sort of palm trees, and palm tree lookalikes that I grow, I think the Living Ch Livingstone of Chinensis is one of the most exotic looking, just in my eyes, just due to the lush fullness of the leaves and the colour. Um, I do prefer the pinnate palms, but for a, a palmate palm, the Livingstone of Chinensis is up there, one of my favourites. Um, the lighting is not brilliant today. Um, the sun has just come out and it's very harsh light and this is half in shade so it's not going to... Hopefully it comes up on camera better than it comes out, what I'm seeing through the viewfinder. Um, so this is my Livingstone of Chinensis I've had for three years. I say three years, I've had it for three winters, four summers if you like, brought as a house plant and in the UK these are going to be sold as house plants, they're not really sold as outdoor plants, again just because they're, I'm not saying they're not hardy but they just don't grow well in our climate, so again people will say well what's the point of growing it then, well again I love palm trees, I want as many different types as I can get so uh, the point of growing it is I like it and I'm going to grow it and there's a lot of very narrow minded people out there especially in the UK that will say oh it's going to lose as many leaves as it gains over the year it's just going to it's not going to be a good grower well maybe not but still I want to grow it so I will anyway so enough of a, a bit of a rant there um, so this is again Three winters I've had this. I did do a video when I bought it, I believe. So if, if you if you can be bothered, you can go back and look. Um, bought as a potted palm. Uh, quite often sold as house plants with multiples in a pot. So this had four individual palms in a pot. That's not a clustering palm. It is a individual solo stemmed palm. Um, but yeah, this is this was four in the pot. I had it over winter, first two years in an unheated summer house. Just so it did get sort of minus temperatures, but didn't really get a frost. So last winter was the last winter I planted out last summer. So the winter just gone is the first winter we've seen outside. And to be expected it did take a little bit of damage I did build a overhead protectionist clear perspex on a frame just to keep it dry and keep the worst of the, the frost out which will make a huge difference um, so what sort of growth do we get out of this and I have to put it in context it has been a rubbish growing season the spring showed a lot of promise we didn't have any late frosts and then it just turned to 
to rubbish basically it just uh, we had a wet cool start and then we had a dry warmer end to summer and nothing nothing growed well but so that's the context of the year we've had but still this when I say this palm these four palms because a cluster each pushed out a leaf each and a spear behind So that is sort of a, a typical of what I'd expect for this palmer that needs heat. If we had a good year, that'd push out two fronds and a spear. On a bad year, I'd say one frond and a spear. So um, this is one of the new ones. Uh, there's another new one here, which is looking quite nice. I'm um, starting to get a little bit of size to it uh, there's another new one sort of hit up at the back of the foliage here and this is a new one here as well with a bit of debris caught in the center um again so it's a cluster of four so there's four separate trunks there each one after pushing out the leaf has got a spear behind it um, so let's talk about the, the cold hardiness of this palm. So you can go around quoting facts and figures all day long, but again, it's going to depend on many factors, not just as hardy down to 8, 10, minus 8 or 10 degrees. Um, that never tells the whole story. That's all about duration and uh, moisture levels as well. Um, I know in a lot of places, maybe sort of southern Europe and US, where they get hot summers and maybe cooler winters, um, they can quite easily die to, down to the ground, but by the end of the growing season, there'll be a nice full plant again. Whereas in this country, we can't afford to do that because they're not going to grow back in the summer. They're not going to bounce back as quick. We don't get the, the heat. So we really need, if you're gonna consider growing a palm like this outside in the ground, you're gonna need to protect it. Um, even if you're in the mildest parts where you rarely see a frost, I'd still consider putting it overhead, some sort of canopy protection over the top of it just to stop any slight frost or moisture building up on the leaves that will bit like uh, Camerops humulus where you'll get the a bit of sort of brown spot and ugly spots and once you've got that you, you just have to cut the leaf off us that doesn't look good um, saying that this this big frond here was uh, from last year so it took very limited damage over last winter there's a, the odd brown spot on the very end tips of the leaves but in general the leaf itself looks good so they can take cold but again just need that little bit of protection um, I certainly what I actually done was again I put a perspex cover over the top and um, I didn't box it in that was open at the sides so full airflow but I did wrap the trunks with fleece um, like I say, there's four little trunks in there, so I just got a, a roll of fleece and weaved it in and out basically, just to protect the growing point, and then the leaves were protected by the by that uh, perspex sheet over the top, and that's certainly done the job. We had uh, minus six, and I did cut off um, probably three or four leaves which did brown off, which actually were outside of the, the canopy. So I know for a fact that that canopy done made all the difference between the palm looking good and not looking good come the end of winter. There's a little beauty. Um, yeah, so again, we are in, I don't know, it's the 2nd October today. So, you know, weather's starting to change. It's definitely a lot cooler. 
So it's time to start thinking about if you've got any sort of half hardy palms or plants, you really should have had a plan by now. Um, again, you don't want to be buying, I won't say this is an expensive plant, I think I paid around £40 for it. So it worked out roughly sort of £10 a plant has been there's four in a pot. And I'd buy another one and put it in the ground if I had space. I, I really like them. Again, a lot of people wouldn't want the hassle of protecting certain palms or plants. I understand that, but to be honest, there's no hassle. It takes about 10 minutes to rig up something. And uh, again, that'll be permanently over winter covered in how I explained. And I will obviously be doing videos later on once all any sort of frames or protection have gone up. But um, yeah, that's, for me, that's no big issue. You, you do it once, it's almost less hassle doing that than it is looking after, for instance, the Bootio Odorata here, which again is, is a, a hardy palm, I'd say, for where I live, but. It is, it will take a little bit of brown spotting on the leaves if it gets sort of uh, prolonged, continual frosts, um, sort of minus five, minus six, and that will take a little bit of damage on the leaves. So again, not gonna kill it, It'll just look a bit nasty. And you know, if you want your plants to look good all year round and not have to wait for the new foliage to, to grow out before it looks good again, then I would consider protecting any plant hardy or not but again going back to the point this boot yield right what I do is or what I have done in the past and what I will do again this year is literally just tie the fronds loosely together and on the on the prolonged frosty nights if we're going to get less than minus two or three I may well just I, I'll, I'll just come out and chuck the fleece bag over it and then as soon as that risk of frost is gone I pull the fleece bag off job's done so it's not really a hassle but it, it could be if you add it up over the winter period that's that is more time consuming in you know coming in and out on frosty nights putting frost uh, fleece bags on and off palms that would be more time consuming than it would be just to spend 10-15 minutes building a little frame over something and leaving it there permanently so that's just something to consider depends um, again if you're going to be growing these sort of palms or plants what sort of protection you want to take a, a sort of a, a permanent and permanent sort of erection <laughs> over the canopy if you like to, to you know so it's there all winter no fuss no worries it's just there and you ain't got to worry about it or whether you want to go down the route of fleecing it you know running in and out after you get back from work um panicking grabbing your fleece bag whipping it over and then taking it off again a few days later when the frosts have gone so again that's down to the individual how you would handle that situation i do both depending on the size of the palm again I did have a canopy over this uh, a wooden frame with a plastic sheet and clear plastic sheet over the top the first year I put it in and it worked brilliantly but now it's a little bit taller I don't really want to do that so yeah I'm going down the fleece bag route on that and a lot of you say well these fleece bags well they're, they're sort of they do let air flow in to an extent they do breathe um, but they do hold humidity as well and in our damp cold winters I wouldn't recommend leaving a fleece bag on or all over winter um, if you've got a fleece bag with a zip on it that's a different story you could do that um, I've got quite a few fleece bags especially the bigger ones they do have zips on them and a drawstring at the bottom so you can literally have the drawstring drawn around the trunk as it were around the trunk of the palm um, and just zip and unzip and 
that would probably be fine. But again, that's, uh, if you've got a, a windy, uh, windy situation, especially in the UK, we do get a lot of winter storms. Um, that's going to be blown about all over the place. There's a good chance of it ripping or maybe even damaging your plant or just blowing away. So this is why with fleece bags I tend to on and off because on the when it's uh, windy or stormy it's not really cold. It's, you know the wind is taking the there's no chance of frost in that situation. Whereas frost is a still still you know cold night where the frost just drops down. And that's where fleece bags are good because you can just drop them over and pull them off. Anyway, we've sort of gone into a different uh, realm of video. I was really just going to do an update on the Livingstone of Chinensis. So I hope that has covered that. And we looked, uh, managed to talk about a little bit about winter protection as well. But there'll be a lot more videos to come on winter protection. Being just that time of year and uh, stay tuned for them so we'll look at some various plants palms anything that may need protection or again a lot of people use this term of i don't need to protect that palm it's bulletproof and i've been guilty of saying that as well and a lot of people say oh track your carp is bulletproof oh um camera ops humorless bulletproof well, I've had both spear pulling me in the past, albeit smaller specimens, and they probably are very hardy when they get a bit of size to them. But if you've got a, a newly purchased or planted palm, they're not going to be fully um, settled in. They're not going to have a good root system. They're not going to be, um, maybe on a smaller side, they're not going to be fully hardy. Anything can spear pull. You can have problems with any palm especially if you've got a damp winter um, so again just bear that in mind even if you've got to track your cups and everyone tells you oh that's, that's bulletproof that's not not a problem um, you can um, and I would say if you've got something you know this is a little little uh, track your cups fortune I hear probably only not even pushing three foot little trunk on it that spear pulled two years ago um, so yeah again just bear in mind that that does take a lot of energy for the plant to recover so for the sake of buying a, a fleece bag which may cost you three or four quid for a small fleece bag just, just protect it on the coldest nights that ain't got to be there all winter you can just put it on on the frosty nights and take it off again Right, I've gone on enough. Again, plenty more winter protection videos to come. Along with a sum up of the growing season. But I do what I... I'm not really going to do a garden tour, but I might well do a, a walk through and just highlight any plants that have done well and any plants that haven't. And... Uh, I need to cut the grass and do a little bit of tidying up first. So, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.